H&M is the official partner of the Fashion and Color podcast, partnering with Harlem's Fashion Row for two years in a row for our Sustainability Summit. H&M is revolutionizing fashion by turning recycled materials into breathtaking, eco-conscious collections, such as Heron Preston, to reshape the fashion landscape through collaborative efforts like the H2 Collection. They are not just crafting clothes, they are crafting the future of fashion. So you guys are in for a real treat today because I have an innovator, a trailblazer, a designer, a mother, a woman who has inspired so many of us here with us today, Anifa Wamba. Hi. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited excited to have you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Okay. This is a dream come true. Okay. Just so you know, because... We write out, like, who are our dream guests oh my for the podcast. So you are absolutely one of them. Oh, my goodness. That's all amazing. First of all, how are you feeling? I feel good. Good. A little exhausted, but I know that comes with being a mom. <laughs> I know. It's just part of the game, but I'm here, and this is what we do. We show up, and we show out. I love it. I told you that that baby is just so yummy. Thank I just... You. We're obsessed. I look at her photo, and I'm just like... Oh, <laughs> We are obsessed. Um, truly a miracle baby. Oh, well, congratulations Thank to you. you. Congratulations to you. Now, you have been on this incredible journey, Anifa. Mm-hmm. Like, I knew about you years and years and years ago, but I feel like the world really got to know who you were in 2020. Oh, yeah, for sure. Can you tell us about that moment in 2020 and kind of how that, or if you feel like that catapulted your career? Oh, yeah. Um, So we were kind of in a season where we were trying to elevate the brand, um, trying to do something different. And what we wanted to do at that time was that year specifically was to show up during Fashion Week. But of course, um, COVID happened. Mm -hmm. The world started to the world actually shut down. And we were like, what are we going to do? And I had like a moment where I was. I would say somewhat a little depressed because I'm just like, the world is shut down. People are dying. Like, who cares about clothes? Yeah. Like, who cares about fashion right now? No one's going to buy anything. And my team, which I'm I'm so grateful for my team because in that moment, they were really like holding me up and lifting Mm -hmm. me up and just encouraging me to continue to just pursue what we wanted to do at that time. So um, I dabbled in... I guess the 3D space for some time. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I've always been very interested in that. And it was a movie that I saw. It was like a Star Wars movie. And um, my boyfriend at the time, now my husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was um, he was just like, yeah, do you know, like, this is like CGI? I was like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm seeing the people and they're talking. He was like, no, this woman already passed like some time ago. And this is like a CGI version of her. And that just sparked my interest from there. And I just started doing a lot of research. Um, And especially since the world had shut down, that gave me, you know, a lot um, a time to just like do whatever. So, yeah, I took that time to learn, study and just figure out a plan. And then um, we put a small team together and then we created what became such a moment, pivotal moment for the brand. And it took the Internet by storm. And honestly, we were just trying to put our collection out. We weren't thinking like it was gonna like blow up and be like this huge global thing. And when it happened, we literally, my team and I, it was like a moment of silence and we were just like, what just happened? <laughs> what did we just do? And then it just, boom. It was like, it, it just took off. It was almost, it was like what we all needed. Yeah, it, it was like beyond, my wildest dreams like I I I didn't even see it in that way and that's how God works right right so good I um when I say like it was what we all needed we were all looking for something Mm -hmm. honestly Mm -hmm. anything Mm -hmm. to inspire us and to get us excited and I remember everybody people who are not in fashion who I didn't even know followed your brand like all my girlfriends we're talking about this fashion show. It was crazy. I would never, never forget what that moment did to me. It was like, 
I mean, it was incredible, incredible, internally grateful always for that. I love that. What I love about your journey, people may not know that you're a self-taught designer. Mm -hmm. And what, when you think about kind of like what motivated you, was it always in you to like sew and to create and to design? Or did is that something that took you by surprise later? Um, I think I wanted, my dream was to be in fashion. Now, I didn't know what, in what way, in what aspect, but I wanted to work at like Vogue and be an editor. At least that's what I thought was like, you know, that's what I saw growing up. You right. see it in magazines and all of these great things. But um, I took a fashion design class in high school mm -hmm. and we had a, I went to Gaithersburg High School and we had like a fashion design class. We had a, a hair salon yeah. that um, girls got their cosmetology cosmetology license and we also had like an auto body shop for mechanics for the boys or guys or girls or whoever and um i took fashion design i loved it i was obsessed with it um and i was like this is what i want to do and uh i took that time to just learn and i would just go to the thrift store um i would buy like oversized pieces and just like sew the size in to make it fit my waist and just like a lot of different things and that's really how it started and i um i'm a student always okay. i love to learn so i spent a lot of time at like joanne fabrics studying patterns and just like trying to learn the craft and understand it a bit more and yeah and and then you started, you, you decided, like, I'm starting this whole brand. Yeah, I mean, I started doing custom. Because a lot of people do that, Anifa, it's and they true. don't end up with a brand it's like true. Anifa. It's true. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. So I started taking on custom orders, and I also used that time to just, okay. like, learn and challenge myself, like, the skill set. And I'm grateful for that season because I understand pattern making I know pattern making and I can oversee pattern making, especially as I'm building teams and things like that. So um, that was, I would say that was 2011. And in 2012, I started my first collection. Okay. Honestly, no background whatsoever on how to do this. I literally was just figuring it out as I went. And here we are. How did you come up with the name Hanifa? Um, I remember I was on a trip with my mom in Turkey and I was um, jotting stuff down and I was just like, just thinking of like, um, looking up different names and meanings. I was just like, wait, wait, my name, my name, what does my name mean? And in Arabic, it means um, believe. Mm. And I was just like, oh my God, this is so perfect because I feel like this is the time where I'm finally believing myself. I'm stepping out on faith. And I just felt like the name and my name, you know, Hanifa is literally like a mirror of myself mm -hmm. and how I've grown and how I've changed and how just like the evolution of mm -hmm. Hanifa has been synonymous with Hanifa. Right. So everything just made sense and here we are. And what, we, what I'm sure you didn't know is all the things that come with actually starting a business oh, true. and being an entrepreneur. Oh, yes. So if you can go back to like the very first moment when you started this brand, what are some of the things you wish you knew? This is just... <laughs> <laughs> go back there emotionally. Take yourself I back have there. I to go back, but I would say I wish I knew how lonely Mm. entrepreneurship is especially when you you see what you're trying to build but no one else around you can see it so not only am I trying to convince myself but I'm also trying to convince my parents mm. who are now looking at me like a failure because I dropped out of school you know trying to convince my friends why I can't come to their birthday parties or their events or show up for them because I'm sacrificing so much to build this dream that I, I this life that I want to have for myself um it was very lonely that was a big challenge for me I remember going through seasons of depression and just like like oh my gosh no one is seeing what I'm seeing like I'm trying and then you know I I, I pushed through um another thing I would say is finances mm. That was something that was very challenging for me. 
um, managing your finances was tough. I did not know how to do that. And cash flow. Cash flow. I did not yeah. know. I did not know. I went through seasons of just being broke and sacrificing everything I had yeah. and just trying to keep things afloat, losing it all, getting it back, losing it all, getting it back until um, a friend of mine who was really great with fine financial things and all of that was assisting me with just kind of managing and taught me a few things, which I'm always so grateful for. Um, but that was like the season where I started to learn and started to manage a bit um, better. I wouldn't change the self-taught part. Mm. I feel like a lot of the mistakes that I made during that season is really why I am the way that I am today. And, and and it's actually the reason why I'm so successful because I was able to really go through it. I was able to really experience it. I was able to feel it. I feel like it really um, strengthened my core and just um, really proud of how resilient I was. I mean, I'm talking about I used to reach out to people that I was so inspired by and to be, you know, no one responds to your messages. No one is responding to your email because they're like, who is this black girl? Who is this girl? Right, right. What is she doing? Like, <laughs> we used to send, we used to send a thousand invites yeah. out to editors <laughs> at the beginning of HFR. None of them came, honey. Yeah, <laughs> they don't come. They don't respond. And I was like, you know what? I got something to say. Right. And I'm going to say it right. in my work ethic, in my work, in my designs, and how I put out my work. And that's exactly what I did. I love that. I love that. Along the journey, you talked about losing it all, getting it back, mm -hmm. losing it all, getting it back. What is the thing? Because most people in that situation would be like, maybe this is not what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Like, this is too hard. Like, it's costing me way too much. What was the thing that kept you going, but I have to keep going? I had nothing to lose. <laughs> wow. I had nothing. I literally had nothing to lose. Like, I didn't have, like, I mean, I worked in retail. We all know sales mm -hmm. commission and stuff like that, how up and down and inconsistent that could be. Um, but I really had nothing. I had nothing. I When people say started from the bottom, I really started from the bottom. And honestly, my relationship with Christ at that time was crucial, mm. was crucial because I felt like um, when I felt my business like slipping out of my hands, I was operating from a deficit. Mm. I'm talking about sewing from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m., um, doing the emails yourself, packaging the orders yourself, going to the post office yourself, um, everything, running the Instagram page, taking the pictures, learning photos. Like, it was just constant. I felt like a hamster on a mm. wheel. And when I left my business, I was like, all right, I'm done. I was like, I, I, I don't want nothing to do so with this. You did leave the business at I some actually point. did. I wow. did for a year. Wow. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I was like, I can't do it. I'm struggling financially. How long had you been doing the business then? I want to say this was 2015. Okay. It's the year that I dropped out and I just went to church. <laughs> 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 I'm serious. I was like, I, I was... I was serving, I was on the worship team, <laughs> I was an usher, like, I just took that time to recenter myself and just, like, find myself through Christ and see who he actually made me to be and what my destiny actually is. Like, what? why am I here? What am I supposed to do? I was, like, soul searching and... I I went I didn't want any I I was like Hanifa like if I heard it I was like stop <laughs> I was like I don't want anything to do with that I I I moved on I went back to working in retail and I mean you really was like I'm done with Hanifa no I was done I was wow. done I was like I was so devoted in my faith in that season um and the crazy thing is 
I could not run from Hanifa because everywhere I turned, someone was reminding me. It was strangers coming up to me like, hey, I have a word for you. The Lord told me this. Or when I was working in retail, hey, oh my gosh, Hanifa. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> I was just like, yo, I cannot. Okay, I was like, all right, Lord. So finally, what it, what made you go, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing? Visions that I've gotten, dreams that I've gotten, specific words that I've gotten. And it was one point, and I was just like, all right, Lord. All right, I was like, okay. I was just like, if I'm going to go back in, I can't make the same mistakes that I made in the past. Mm. You know, I need to operate differently. I need to move differently. Um, and I was just like, I just need something that will take me from this point to this point. And in that time, I looked at all the mistakes that I made and I was just like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. And then I launched shoes footwear for the first mm -hmm. time. And that was my very first viral moment on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then it just started to go up from there. So ever since that moment, I never looked back again. Wow. Wow. Mm. What was the year you had in business where you were like, okay, we're going to be all right? <laughs> 2020. The 2020? After the, <laughs> after the 3D show, I was like, we're good. You're going to be all right? Yeah, I was like, like, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And it was just so, I mean, I think anyone that decides to embark on a journey of becoming mm -hmm. an entrepreneur or a business owner, your dream is to be successful. Mm -hmm. But what that show did for me, Brandis, I can't even tell you like mm -hmm. how empowering, powerful, just like, I was just like, we're, we are exactly where we're supposed mm -hmm. to be. We are exactly where we're supposed to be. And, um, like I said, I'm just so grateful, so grateful for that season and that time and um, and for it to happen in such a crucial time. Mm -hmm. Something so crazy that we were all facing mm -hmm. and dealing with globally and for that to be, for me, the light for me mm -hmm. in that situation at that time was just like mind blowing. Did you feel seen? Oh, for sure. Was that the moment oh, where you felt absolutely. really seen? Absolutely. There were people who I had, hadn't talked to in years and um, people that I, like, admire, like, DMing me. I'm just like, <laughs> me? <laughs> me? Oh. <laughs> so it was really still very humbling, you know, very cool and um, amazing. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. And then since then, you were a CFTA fashion finalist. Yeah. So everything just started to like just that's like, major. And yeah, that was huge. That was huge. I don't even if that that even was like a dream come true. I was just like, wow, this is amazing. And going through that experience was also a lot of lessons learned there. And just like I always felt excluded from the industry. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, as a black designer. We're always like pigeonholed, you know, mm -hmm. we're all placed in the same box and this is how we are supposed to operate. Mm -hmm. This is what we're supposed to look like. And these are the resources that we get. So for me, I always felt like an outside, per like always on the outside looking in like, okay, like, mm -hmm. you know, this is, this is what it is. But being a part of that was really cool. It was really cool to see you mm -hmm. a part of the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was amazing. It was cool. It was very nice. Um, and um, that also opened a lot of opportunities for us as well and relationships. So then you launch. Okay, so you do shoes. Mm -hmm. You got your women's wear, which everybody's wearing. Mm -hmm. Like I got my sweater with the fringe yes. and the whole thing. Love it. But then was it last year? Mm -hmm. that you launch bridal. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yes. And it was done in such a beautiful way. Thank you. Like I just everything about it. I couldn't make it. Yeah. But I was watching it. Yes. And it just it it, it felt so special. What was it Thank like you. for you to launch bridal? And what made you decide to do that? And where you decided <laughs> to do it was also very <laughs> intentional. Um it was also a dream of mine because 
when I was doing custom orders back then, I was doing brides too. Okay. Every every now and then I had a bride um, that I did like a dress gown or something that was a part of like their special day or whatever. And I've always wanted to do it because at Hanifa, we're constantly celebrating women and we want to be a part of all of your moments. Why not be a part of your wedding and your special day? So this was like years in the making years in the making it was like we started and then we paused because it wasn't the right time we started and we paused and it wasn't the right time and then i was like this is the year and we're gonna mm -hmm. do it well and honestly it felt so ordained mm -hmm. it was just like the way everything was orchestrated god was really in that place like um i remember when we were doing um the rehearsal and it was like worship music is what the girls walked um what the models was walking to and i was like okay i'm i'm gonna start crying in here so i'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna leave and y'all make sure that they they're walking to but it was just so beautiful it was so timely it was so needed and everything just made sense and i love moments like that and that's how I want to move in every decision, every um, move that we make with the brand and business. And it was just perfect. And it was a salamander, which I love. It was I a love. salamander, black owned. Yes. Women owned. Yes. Resort, luxury resort. It was beautiful, it, it was, was beautiful. And Sheila wasn't able to attend. But she she came when we were doing the rehearsal and she saw everything. It was oh. so nice to like just meet her and connect with her. At I that love time. that. Yeah. I love that. She's so inspiring. My oh, goodness, sure. she's so inspiring. For sure. For sure. Your mom, I know, has played a big role in terms of just your inspiration. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about how your mom has inspired you and how you're hoping to inspire your daughter? Oh my God, what a question. Oh, my mom. She is another reason why I love suits all the time. You always see me wearing a suit. But my mom used to, I used to watch how she would get up and how she would put on her suits. She was a suited woman child back then. Uh -huh. She was, <laughs> and um, always had like red lipstick on. In the beginning of the brand, if you look back at our campaigns, the models always had on red lipstick. But um, I was just so inspired by her, her strength. The woman has seven kids, okay? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> so just seeing her being the woman that she was and just how she juggled everything was always so inspiring to me. And um, when I used to do the custom orders and everything, my mom was right there. The nights where I couldn't keep my head up when I was falling asleep, when I was struggling, when I was this when I was depressed, she was right there. So mm -hmm. um always inspired by her and just so grateful for everything that she did for me that helped me get to this point. And then as for my daughter, <sighs> I don't want to get emotional talking about this, but I just want her to I will never force anything on her. I don't think that's the way to go, at least not my style of parenting, but I want to raise her to always be herself mm -hmm. and her best self and mm -hmm. all in everything that she does. And she watching everything. And she's watching everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, if it wasn't her birthday this weekend, she would have been here too. So I just, I want to have the life where I take her along the journey yeah. so that she could see everything, so that she could experience everything, so that she can have stories later on in life about how she traveled with her mom and she saw all these incredible things happen and all of that good stuff. I love that. I can't wait to see. It's so crazy. My daughter is eight and when she was probably two and three years old, she said, I'd say, how was your day, Sky? What happened? And she'd tell me and then she'd go, how was your day? What happened? <laughs> And I would tell her about my meetings. Oh I would tell her what God. would happen. I would talk numbers to her. And she would like, just be listening. And she would just say, uh-huh, uh-huh. 
Oh, no, she had no idea God. what I was talking about. But now I hear her talk and I'm like, oh, wow. She was listening. She was picking all these she little things listening. up. That's so, so crazy. crazy. That's so crazy. It's so crazy. Um, now, what I've been hearing from you is that you have a lot of dreams and vision for Hanifa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My assumption is that you've probably only achieved like half of that. I feel like there's a lot more in you. <laughs> I'm, la I'm laughing because it is. I just, honestly, I mean, we're always talking about Hanifa for women without limits. I just don't see why I should limit myself in any way. Even if it doesn't happen tomorrow, if I want to do something, I am determined and I'm going to do it. So all the dreams and visions that I have, if it doesn't work today, if it doesn't work tomorrow, it's going to work at some point. So I just try to plan accordingly and also just pray about every move that I make, too. Love that. How does taking risks play a part in what you do? I mean, you have to be a risk taker. What's one of the risks you've taken? <laughs> <laughs> so many. I mean, that that uh, 3D show was a risk. We actually broke into Instagram. What? Yeah. Wow. We were the first. We were the first brand because it was already pre-recorded. It wasn't, it actually wasn't live. Right. But we were able to do it. So that was the first time that people saw that it was possible to be live with something that was already pre-recorded on Instagram. That was a risk. How did y'all do that? Child's research. You'll find it. <laughs> Trust oh me, it's, there's so much out there, and I was uh -huh. doing my research, and we figured it out. We, yeah, it worked. Wow, that was a risk. Wow, that ended up being so successful. Right, right. Wow. And Meta always tells me when I have conversations with them, they're like, "We've been talking about this for <laughs> <laughs> how in the world did this brand yeah how did, into Instagram how did they do it and yeah." We did it. We did it. Well, where there's a wheel, there's a way. That's where it. there's a wheel, there's a way. Yeah. Um. So many people are watching this, and they're like, "Hanifa looks. Hanifa got it all, right? <laughs> you just got married. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. You have this beautiful baby. Yes. You have this thriving business. What has it cost you? <laughs> I'm laughing at everything because it's just like. I mean, sacrificing in the beginning, that's that's what I sacrifice a lot, a lot. I'm talking about sleepless nights. I mean, struggling, like being broke, like just all of the things that I endured in the beginning led me to this point. Mm. And you kind of have to, well, at least for me, that was my journey. Let me say that because I know it's different for a lot of people, but that was just my journey and that was my process. And that's what I went through and that's what I chose to go through mm. to get to this point. I was determined. Mm. Um, failure was not an option for me. I was just like, look, I don't have nothing to lose. I have to do it. This is what I want to do. And I just had this tunnel vision and dream and focus. And that's what got me to this point. I love that so much. Anything you want to leave people with? Never, never give up on yourself. Whether it's a dream or if it's a vision, never give up on yourself. And whatever you're good at, foster that, nurture it, um, and work on that. And that would absolutely lead you to your success. And that's I love it so much. <laughs> I feel like you have this, right? I do. I do. You we do, got a copy. Yeah, we yeah, got a copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in, Congratulations. Because you're, you're in here. Hold on. Where are you at? You're here, I'm right? in there. I'm yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in there. Hold on, hold on. Let me find you. Let me find you. Um, I know you're asking me questions, but what was this like for you? <laughs> <laughs> like you're laughing too. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. Um, it was, we actually had a whole other book done. We had a whole book done. Prior and I got the, one. prior to this one, 
And I got the book and I said, this ain't it. Oh my goodness. And that was so hard for my team to hear. And it was hard for me to say, to be honest with you, because it was really, really, really hard for me to to say that to them because um, we had worked so hard on that other book. But I just knew it wasn't it. And I was like, I can't put, I can't put something out into the world, especially something that features designers of color if it ain't right. No, I feel that way. And I just scrap stuff too. And I just scrap the whole thing. And then I gave myself the opportunity to just step away from it. I stepped away from it totally for months. What happened was Macy's came to us and they said, We want you guys to do something for Black History Month for the windows. And I was like, we don't have anything. Like, how do you tell Macy's you don't have anything for five windows at Herald Square? But I was like, but my team kept having meetings with Macy's mm-hmm. about these windows. And I was like, what are y'all, why are y'all, why do y'all keep <laughs> meeting with Macy's about this window? They were like, because we think we should do the book. I was like, there is no book. Mm. And finally, one day I just said, maybe, maybe we redo the whole book. I mean, this is going to be tight because it was oh, like... But it was when you like, walked away, you were just like, I'm just not going to do it. I, I was going to do it, but I just didn't know when I would pick it back up I because see. it was such a big thing to let it go. Mm-hmm. So we... But once I finally said, okay, tell Macy's we're going to have this in the window. It's going to be done. Then it was like, I mean, the the things we had to do to get this book done in that short amount of time was crazy. But I worked all though. through the holidays. But Christmas Eve, I had a conference call. But you did it, though. Yeah. You did it. Yeah. You did it. You yeah. did it. Yeah. And everything happens for a reason. It does. It you does. You scrapped it, and now look at what you it's have. This, I absolutely love this. There you go. And, like, all of these paintings, we actually have the originals to all of these. So this is the one with Anifa Yay. in it. Oh, my gosh. We got to get a picture of you holding it up. I know. Um, But she did... The the artist for this, uh, um, Ashley, like I felt like she captured everybody's essence, mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm. what every through the paintings I was like, you actually captured their essence mm-hmm, through the paintings. Mm-hmm. That's a talent. That's a talent. That's a talent. Right? Mm-hmm. It's a talent. So we're really proud of it. Thank you so much for agreeing to be in it, and I'm so excited about your journey. I feel like we are just seeing a piece of what you have coming. Mm-hmm. It feels like the beginning still. It, it actually feels like the beginning still. As crazy as it sounds, it does. And honestly, I don't want to rush anything. I want to still be able to feel and go through what I need to go through. But yeah, we're ready for whatever the Lord has for us and ready to take on the world by storm. I love it. All right, some rapid fire questions. Okay. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Both, both, both. I could be a night owl and I could also be a morning person. Texting or phone call? Texting. Sneakers or heels? Heels. Yeah, dress up or dress down? Dress up. I love to dress up. (laughs) A good dress up day is just hair done, makeup done, everything. I love dressing up. New York or Maryland? (laughs) New York. (laughs) New York. I love New York. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Of course. Oh, Man, goodness. you got me at the end. <laughs> New York. I said, see, this, this going to get her right yeah, here. Yeah, New York. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Fashion and Color Podcast. I want to thank our production partner, PBA Entertainment, the Harlem's Fashion Row team. Thank you so much for your support of Harlem's Fashion Row and for your support of Designers of Color. Please be sure to leave us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to share this with a friend. Welcome to the HFR movie.